It must have been the steel in his spine that set off a screening device at Nashville Airport this afternoon. But our next guest would not submit to a full body pat down, according to Cousin Janet's TSA goons, who have yet to catch a single terrorist who ordered him to do so. This United States senator stood his ground and was grounded for his efforts. Here to tell his side of the story is Kentucky Republican Senator Rand Paul. You know, we booked you to be on the show, Senator Paul, to talk about your father's <laughs> political uh, campaign. And then this happened. What happened to you this morning in Nashville? Well, you know, when I woke up this morning, I hadn't intended on anything like this happening. I got to the airport early, went through the screener like I always do, and it said, something's gone off on your knee. And I said, well, here's my pants leg. I rolled it up and pulled my socks down. I said, there's nothing there. And they said, well, we don't really care to look at your leg. And I said, well, you know, do you care whether something's there? There's nothing there. And they said, no, we need to do a pat down. And I said, well, why don't I just walk through the screener again? I was in the airport three days ago and they let me walk through the screener. And they said, no, they refused. And so I was detained in a cubicle. Now, they say I wasn't detained, but they told me I couldn't leave the cubicle. And when I tried to leave, I was ushered back into the cubicle. So I kind of felt like I was being detained. And then I tried to use my phone to contact my office because I was speaking to a Right to Life march this afternoon of 200,000 people. It was a big deal. And I wanted to let my office know I was being detained. And they told me that now I would have to have a full body search because I touched my telephone. Mm. And that was against the rules for me to touch any of my uh, belongings. And, and how does this end? You obviously made it to Washington. You're there now. Well, interestingly, after about an hour and a half of this, after not getting on the plane, after trying to talk to the head of TSA to find out what their rules are, because one week I'm allowed to go back through the screener and this week I'm not, after about an hour and a half of that, they let me walk back through the screener. And guess what? The screener didn't go off. The other thing I learned today, Judge, which I think is very interesting, is I think the screeners are doing random screens. I think the buzzers are going off when you go through the screener in a random fashion or in order to subject you to random pat downs. That's why they don't go off each time you go through. It's either that or the machines don't work at all. I tend to think the machines work, but they're making you feel like you did something wrong when the buzzer goes off. Then you submit more readily to the body search. So, so you, you, Senator Rand Paul, think that the government is making up an excuse, a non-existent basis for the pat-down in order to uh, 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 subdue members of the populace. Two uh, TSA agents indicated that they felt that that was true without directly saying it was true. They felt it was possible that I was getting a random search. And so it makes me suspicious, but now the TSA is officially saying that they don't do random searches based on their screening devices. Right. And they have officially said that to the media. So either they're now saying that they aren't going to tell the truth or that is the truth. But today, two of them told me that they felt there was random screening going on based on false alarms from the screening machines. Do, do but the you... local screener doesn't know it's a false alarm. Got the it. local screener thinks it's a real alarm. Got it. Senator Paul, do you know if they knew who you were? I ask you that because of the clause in the United States Constitution, which prohibits the government from arresting or detaining members of Congress when they are going to or coming from the Capitol. I typically get in line and show just my driver's license. I wait in line like everybody else. I think they ultimately knew who I was, but I'm not sure when they decided they knew what it was, knew who I was. But uh, I never indicated to anybody or asked for special treatment. I think it ought to be the same treatment for all Americans. If you go through the screening device and you don't want to pat down, I think you ought to be allowed to go back through the screening device in case the screening device is making mistakes. Were you free to leave when you were in that cubicle and attempting to use your telephone? No, because I asked to leave and I actually took a step out in defiance of their orders and I was escorted back into the cubicle. There was a TSA agent outside of the cubicle and I wanted to talk to him, not to the people who were in my cubicle. And I stepped out and I was very aggressively uh, told that I needed to be back in the cubicle. But the interesting thing is, is when they got tired of detaining me, they then evicted me and told me I could stay no longer. Oh. So after a while, I still wanted to be detained because I wanted to try to get on my plane and I was waiting to see if Washington would intervene. 
And they said, no, you have to leave. And the policeman then took me outside of the secure area, and I had to go back through the process oh again. Do, it, uh, it was crazy. Is there anything that you as a United States senator can do about this? It's inefficient. It doesn't work. It's unconstitutional. It's authoritarian. If it happened to you, Rand Paul, it could happen to anybody. I'm sure it's happening to people on a daily basis. I spoke with the director of the TSA Pistole this afternoon, and I asked him for two things. Number one, they're letting children go back through because they understood how offended we were by these invasive exams of six and seven year olds. Children can go back through. I said, let adults go through. He says, oh, it'll take too much time. I said it would take 20 seconds. That, sc that screener is fast. Let people go back through, or if they want to do a pat down, let them do a pat down, but let them get back in line and go back through. Not the distant line, but let them go right back into the screener and come through again. And I said, how can you know if it's going to take too much time unless you try it? So I don't know. Maybe they'll listen and maybe they'll do a pilot program of that. The other thing I asked for is I think the superiors need to have discretion. If Judge Napolitano is going through the Nashville airport, there needs to be a manager on site that when you say, I don't want to do a screening, and they ask, who are you? You show your ID and you say, I'm going back to New York. I have an interview this evening. I travel four times a week. You right. can call my employer and vouch for who I am, but I don't want a body search. I think that should be enough. But then it has to be an individual who has the discretion right. to say, oh, that's right. I know who you are, and I see you traveling all the time. And it doesn't mean that you get special attention, but then any American, if I work for IBM and I say, I'm going to St. Louis, right. call my employer in St. Louis, and you can verify who I am. I just don't want to be patted down. We should make them do that in order to say that we're in charge, not the government. Hopefully, hopefully change will come from this. We'll have you back later in the week to talk about South Carolina and Florida and the Republican nomination uh, and those who are seeking it. Senator Paul, it's a pleasure. No matter what we talk about, thanks for joining us. Thank you. What happens when college Republicans...